So we have a set w. This consists of all the functions that are bounded. So what does it mean for a function to be bounded? It means that there is a number m such that the absolute value of the function is less than or equal to m for all x and r. And we want to prove that this is a subspace of all functions. So recall that w is a subspace of v if we have three conditions. The first condition is that w is non-empty. Two, w is closed under vector addition. So is closed under vector addition. That means given any two vectors in w, the sum of the vectors is also in w. So in this problem, our vectors are actually functions, so it's a little bit different. And three, w is closed under scalar multiplication. And what this means is that given any vector x in w and any scalar c in a field, here our field will be the real numbers, that we have a new vector, which is the scalar c times the vector. This is the scalar product, and that's also in w. So in order to do this problem, we carefully have to go through and just check all of these conditions. So proof. We first have to show w is non-empty. We have to think of a function uh, that's definitely bounded. Well, the zero function. So note, let's call it zero hat from r to r given by, so this is the zero function. It takes every x and sends it to zero. is in w. So the claim is that the zero function is in w and the reason is if you take zero of x well you just get zero. So if you take the absolute value of that that's less than or equal to say I don't know 2 for all x and r. Why did I pick 2? Uh, it doesn't really matter what number you pick as long as it's non-negative right? To satisfy this definition you could have picked any number bigger than zero. So here this is zero so there's no issues there. So this shows that this guy is inside w, so the first condition is actually satisfied. Let me put a little one here to indicate that we've just done the first condition. Two, we have to show that w is closed under vector addition. So we have to take any two vectors in w, and we have to show the sum is also in w. So take any f and g in w. And now we have to show f plus g is in w. Well, before we do that, maybe let's go ahead and write down what it means for f and g to be in w. So then, there exists, well, we're going to have two different m's because we have two functions. So I'm going to use m1 and m2 and r such that, well, the absolute value of f of x is less than or equal to m1 for all x and r and the absolute value of g of x is less than or equal to m2 for all x and r. So now we have to show that f plus g is there. So we have to look at the absolute value of f plus g. So then the absolute value of f plus g of x, right, this is a new function, it's called f plus g, well this is equal to, by definition of function addition, f of x plus g of x. Then we have to use something um, from other math areas, it's called uh, the triangle inequality. This is less than or equal to the absolute value of f of x plus the absolute value of g of x. And we know something about the absolute value of f of x. It's less than or equal to m1. So this is less than or equal to m1 plus m2. And so all we do is we call this m. And we have it. And this is true for all x and r. 
So we have f plus g of x less than or equal to some constant. So f plus g is in w. So that shows closure under vector addition. Now we just have to show uh, closure under scalar multiplication. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we're done. So three, take any. Let's use f again, and w. I could have used the same one, but uh, I didn't. <laughs> and uh, scalar c in the field of real numbers. Then as before, we go through the same game. We write down what it means for f to be in w. It means there is a constant m and r such that the absolute value of f of x is less than or equal to m for all x and r. Then, and now we have to look at the scalar product, cf of x, and we have to show that this is bounded. So this is equal to the absolute value of c times f of x. Well, the absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. This is c times the absolute value of f of x. And this is less than or equal to the absolute value of c times m. And this is for all x and r. So here we have our new m. This is our new constant, say m tilde. So we have cf of x less than or equal to some constant for all x and r. So the vector cf is in w. So I kind of rushed through that uh, really, really quickly. Um, and then, but hopefully it makes sense. And then, so therefore it's a subspace. Let me go ahead and write that down. So therefore w is a subspace. But hopefully uh, it made some sense. I wanted to keep the video short. Basically you just uh, check all three conditions very carefully. And uh, we did have to use uh, the triangle inequality uh, right here. Right? This was the triangle inequality, the absolute value of a plus b. Uh, is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. But other than that, um, it wasn't, wasn't too bad. That's it.